Sandra Botticelli's Madonna of the Magnificat, painted around 1480 or 1481, depicts the Virgin Mary enthroned with the Christ child on her lap. They are attended by five angels. Two angels hold an open book, and two angels crown Mary as Queen of Heaven. This work exemplifies Botticelli's use of line, color, and composition to draw the viewer into a vision of refined beauty. Advancing an artistic language that combines visual naturalism and spiritual grace, Botticelli's art cultivates a heightened awareness of and closeness with a sacred reality. His capacity to visualize spiritual intimacy made Botticelli one of the most sought after painters of 15th century Florence and continues to draw viewers to his art. The Magnificat, which is also known as the Song of Mary, is the Virgin's prayer as spoken to her cousin Elizabeth in the Gospel of Luke. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from this day all generations will call me blessed. Botticelli does not illustrate the biblical episode. Instead, he imagines a scene that theologically builds on Mary's prayer. No artist has surpassed Botticelli in translating the spirit of the sacred expression into visual art. Mary's Magnificat is her response of praise to God for the spiritual transformation that he has caused. The Virgin Mary's right hand holds a quill, with which she is writing her prayer into a book. In her left hand, she holds a pomegranate. The infant Christ seems to be taking this fruit which is a symbol of his passion. The subtleties of this painting, such as how Botticelli uses the opening of Mary's robe to frame Christ as if she were a tent or even a tabernacle and Christ were emerging out of her, expands our reading of their relationship. Botticelli forecasts the fulfillment of Mary's prophetic prayer as she is crowned Queen of Heaven. Botticelli's painting realizes this heavenly event in a contemporary landscape. He magnifies the lowly material of tempera paint on panel into a splendorous vision of glory. Botticelli's art unites visual naturalism and spiritual grace. The significance of his aesthetic comes into better focus if we recognize him as a Florentine painter of devotional subjects working in the second half of the 15th century. One of the most significant achievements of Florentine painting in the first half of the century was the development of pictorial naturalism. In the work of artists such as Masaccio and Fra Filippo Lippi, we can see how the gold background inherited from Gothic art was replaced by depictions of space that had the illusion of three-dimensionality. However, a potential limitation of this naturalism is also evident in the art of Lippi, with whom Botticelli had apprenticed. Lippi's Madonna is beautiful and gracious, and yet, as a result of Lippi's heightened naturalism, she looks very much like a woman that we might meet in real life. Perhaps to the modern eye, this makes Lippi's work more attractive. However, there were contemporary critics who found that these naturalistic depictions of Mary made her look too common for a woman who was the mother of God. The visual language of Botticelli's Madonna of the Magnificat, a work that celebrates Mary's glorification from a humble woman to Queen of Heaven, succeeds in retaining the accomplishments of his teacher, but elevates this naturalism to a higher state of grandeur. Botticelli was born around 1445 in Florence. Botticelli's life and art were strongly connected to the history of Florence's so-called Golden Age. In 1475, Botticelli painted an Adoration of the Magi, which simultaneously celebrates the spiritual and the material flourishing of the Florentine Renaissance. This altarpiece includes portraits of three generations of the Medici family. Botticelli's altarpiece, which firmly established his artistic reputation as a leading artist, also features a self-portrait. The artist looks out at the viewer, 
with a sense of self-confidence in his place in the civic, religious, and artistic life of his time. 15th century Florence was a highly devout society. This created a context for the development of an art in the service of faith. Botticelli was one of the most skillful and innovative painters of devotional subjects in late 15th century Florence. For his contemporary viewers, sacred paintings such as the Madonna of the Magnificat were conduits of religious experience. Even today, when his paintings hang in museums rather than chapels, an appeal of Botticelli's art is that they give us access to sacred mystery. Although today, The Birth of Venus is probably Botticelli's most well-known work, in his own lifetime, he was primarily a painter of devotional paintings. A central theme in his art is the visible transformation of a person's inner life through divine agency. In Botticelli's art, the transformative blessing of God was depicted in forms of grace and beauty. While modern viewers may appreciate the elegance and allure of Botticelli's aesthetic for its own sake, in works such as the Madonna of the Magnificat, this visual language serves a sacred purpose. Botticelli was exceptionally gifted at visualizing his subject's spiritual being. This is largely, but not limited to, his use of line. Line is often used to delineate, to separate one thing from another, one person from another, or a person from their environment. Botticelli was able to use line to connect. This is achieved both through the character of the line itself and through how the line functions in the composition. Botticelli depicted his subjects in a state of coming closer together. Mary and Christ come closer together. The viewer and the subject come closer together. In her Magnificat, Mary praises God for taking her a humble and lowly woman, and glorifying her such that everyone will call her blessed. But how does an artist visualize this transformation? What does being blessed look like? Addressing these questions was a central concern of Botticelli's art. For Botticelli's Renaissance Christian viewer, being blessed would mean having a more intimate spiritual relationship with Christ. In Christ, as Botticelli depicted him, God incarnate is not remote from the everyday. In Botticelli's paintings of Christ and Mary, we see the transformative realization of the spiritual intimacy. This theme of the humble being spiritually transformed through divine agency is also evident in one of Botticelli's last great paintings, The Mystical Nativity. In this work, Botticelli depicted the spiritual mystery of the Incarnation as a divine intervention that has a transforming power to fulfill temporal reality. Echoing themes in the Virgin Mary's Magnificat, Botticelli's painting of the Nativity celebrates the Incarnation of Christ as simultaneously both a fulfillment of past promises as well as a forecast of future glory. Through divine agency, the humble is exalted. Botticelli's Madonna of the Magnificat suggests how art can be an agent by which God can transform the inner life of the viewer. The purpose of sacred art is to move the soul from a spiritually closed state to a spiritually open state. In this work, Mary is a model of that process. Even if some modern viewers don't engage Botticelli's art as a conduit of divine blessing. Many viewers find that Botticelli's paintings quicken something spiritual within them. A visual realization of spiritual intimacy, Botticelli's Madonna of the Magnificat makes divine grace seem more accessible.